What's up, everybody? Thralls Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jim John. And we have an album review for you. So, we decided to kind of lead off this weekend with something a little bit more underground, just because there's some definitely big releases coming out, but we wanted to kind of dive in and find something strange and evil and very appropriately October-y. And I think we found it. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. So we are going to go over the debut full length from uh, De Deva, Deva, Deva. I don't know how to say that. D A E V A, and their album "Through Sheer Will and Black Magic," which is honestly kind of how we got this channel going. <laughs> Oddly enough, yeah. yes, yeah, definitely the black magic part. Definitely that part because I don't know how we would have pulled it off otherwise. Looking back on everything and looking at us now, there's no way. It's a good thing we burned the bodies. Anyway, this comes out on the 14th of October on 20 Buck Spin Records. It's been formed uh, a little bit before 2017 because that's when their first EP came out. I couldn't find exactly when this band formed, but they are from Philadelphia. Again, this is their first full length, one other EP, and this is some fucking feral as fuck black and thrash featuring members of Crypt Sermon, and also featuring some ex-members of Vector and Coffin Dust as well. Actually, three of the members on here are in Crypt Sermon, which I guess is kind of one of the reasons why I'm waiting around for another Crypt Sermon album in so long. But uh, well, I wanted to check this one out because I heard a couple of singles, and man, this is an intense listen. Once you get past the uh, intro, though, because uh, there's like a two and a half minute intro, which granted, it's all the creepy ambience you could ever want. I swear to you that he and I went to a Halloween store earlier today. I swear to you this was playing in the Halloween store. Just the intro. Yeah. I mean, Spirit of Halloween's pop up anywhere there's a closed down store. And believe me, Toledo has plenty of those. Yep. They closed down our Bed Bath & Beyond. Especially the Beyond section. That was the, the most fun yep, part. it really was. I don't know. I kind of like the interdimensional alien tile section. That was really cool. That was in the Beyond section. You didn't ever go there? I didn't ever get in there. Oh, that man, dude. Weird. Or maybe I did, and maybe I'm still in there. And this is all an alternate reality. You could do so much better in terms of your alternate reality. I know. Realities. Oh, trust me. Oh, I know. Right out of the gate with The Architect and The Monument, this album just immediately comes out swinging. It's left behind the intro and the creepiness and whatever, and just, bam, straight in the door. Here you go. Blasty, riffy. The vocalist sounds like he is legit in a cave. Yep. Like, back in a cave. Or like, you know, the catacombs of a fucking graveyard. Someplace loud and echoey and haunted. Mm. I don't know what the relationship is between this architect and their monument, but I would say it's unhealthy and abusive. Because this is just <laughs> a vicious fucking song. Yep. And that is kind of like a good chunk of this. This literally starts, you know, with the intro, you're like, oh, you know, this is cool, it's a good setup, and then bam, you're right here, and anytime you try to pull down, you're like, okay, nope, we're staying here. Because yeah. this album is just explosive. Like, almost every song on here is just riddled with insane, heavy, wild riffing. Like, it kind of feels like it's teetering on the, like, control here. Yeah, now, a lot of times when you think of black metal and thrash metal and the two of them together in this cavernous reverb drenched atmosphere here you don't really tend to think 80s but <laughs> a lot of the the riffs and definitely the lead work especially in passion under the hammer remind me of van halen yeah the the, the hook did i mean there. this definitely has some like fierce 80s hooks honestly i got a lot of like 80s thrash in here namely the song polluting the sanctuary revolution against faith that song pretty much just takes Kill them all and show no mercy and adds a healthy dose of fucking Bathory to mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. and just makes it snarling and evil, but the riffs are fun. Like, they just fucking propel the fucking song, but they're kind of that 80s stuff. And like you said on Passion, there's like this 80s metal stomp yeah, to yeah. it. Like, I kind of thought of Ozzy Osbourne for mm -hmm. a little bit, too. There's even a little bit in the song Arena of Dis to sort of break up the fucking pure mayhem on that one, which is... This is one of the heaviest, most aggressive songs. Like, right out of the gate, it actually sounded more akin to, like, Death Grind for a second. Like, mm -hmm. I was thinking about what if Exhumed went full-on black metal. That'd be kind of fun. I don't know if Matt Harvey has a black metal project yet. Now, outside of all this, this record is also very, very melodic. I even thought of, like, Mastodon riffs. Like, a dark, blackened Mastodon and the Philophobic that we just reviewed. Too. Yeah. It's just, uh, while they're very intense, crazy riffs, 
they're not so buried under all this atmosphere that you can't hear them. No, I, I think the guitars are very forward in the mix. Yep. And, like, the, the intensity of the playing overall in here is definitely, like, something. Like, you hear, like, not the most basic riffs. Like, these are very, like, structured, crawling, mm -hmm. lots of dissonant melodies, especially in the last track, Luciferian Return, and Loosen the Tongues of the Dead. I love these song titles. These song titles are fucking good. But those are nice moments to sort of break up, again, the flat-out chaos. Like, this is very full throttle, almost across this entire 36-minute runtime. You do get some moments of, like, some ambient stuff to break it up, like some clean melodies here and there. Like, in the end of Passion Under the Hammer, that song definitely seems to have a little bit more melody than yeah, maybe a good chunk of this, like, because a lot of this kind of just thrives on the energy. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely propelled by the performances on here. The drum work on here is almost exhausting. It is, but it's not so over the top that you, you know, that there's just a, you think of like, wow, that drummer's insane. He's insane in the sense that he's moving very quickly and he's beating the dog piss out of those drums. It's not really flashy by any means. It's not like he's doing a bunch of crazy turnovers. He's almost very meat and potatoes as far as like thrash and, and black metal will be concerned, but he's solid. Yeah. Always. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of like, uh, Chris Reifert, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, almost more of a punk drummer playing extreme metal. Like, I just play loud and as fast as I can, and it seems like you guys are kind of doing the same thing, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. A good chunk of this, I would say, is very comparable to bands like R Noir, Absu, and early Bathory, too. Like, when it comes down to its most black metal parts, which I definitely would say are Itch of the Bottle and Luciferian Return mm -hmm. at the end, that whole section gets very cold and very dark and sinister versus the two songs that come before it, Fragmenting in Ritual Splendor and Polluting the Sanctuary once again. It's a horrible thing to do to that sanctuary. I love the sanctuary. We're going to go there tonight. Yeah. yeah, we're going to go there tonight, go see Revocation. Woo! But, uh, yeah, Polluting the Sanctuary. As much as I really like that place, good Lord, I thought that song had more of a grindy beat down to it. There's D beats, the riff work is fucking furious, but it's catchy. Like, that was one of the main things. Like, I get all these old kind of Bay Area. Like, if the whole Bay Area was just uh, teeming with zombies and demons and... I mean, I don't know what goes on in the Bay Area. It might be that way whatever's right on the Whatever's on the cover of this record. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's literally yeah. the cover of this record. But yeah, those two songs are like a back-to-back -back fucking thrashy punch. And it's kind of cool to hear them switch gears because a good chunk of this in the beginning seemed like it was pivoting back and forth between the two styles very mm -hmm. quickly. Like, you get the icy cold tremolo riffs, and then you would get, like, some more palm-muted sort of machine gun chugs. These songs kind of centered in on maybe one more than the other just to sort of balance it out. Although that breakdown in Itch of the Bottle, ugh, unrelenting fucking breakdown. Another thing I, I do like, too, is while there is a bunch of tremolo in the atmosphere, it's not solely used to create the atmosphere. A lot of the atmosphere is whatever the hell is happening with with synths, and then riffs. Riffs are dominant more in the atmosphere than anything else. Yeah, the guitar tone itself actually really kind of lends itself to it. Like, it's very kind of squawky and raw. Yep. It still sounds really good, and when it delivers, like, some huge heavy riffs, like, it has a fucking punch, but it's that sort of, like, raw, dirty sound mm -hmm. to it that kind of just makes it sound extra creepy. Plus, you have what I assume is a ghoul or a demon that is shrieking its guts out Something. through the largest length of sewer pipe on the planet. <laughs> In the beginning of uh, Fermenting Ritual of Splendor, the... Uh, he just oh, revs weird. up a growl. <laughs> but, I mean, it kind of just, you know, revs up the song anyway because it just takes off from there. So, I don't know, I, I kind of like this whole like, peaked out energy on mm -hmm. here. It really makes this, like, a fun, energetic listen. I am not awake enough for this record, but I was <laughs> while we listened to it. <laughs> the production for what this was overall was actually fairly spot on. Arthur um, Risk. Well, there you go. Yeah. The, I don't need to say a whole lot more. Everything sounded great. The drums had a, a very nice presence to them. You could hear pretty much all the pieces, which is what you want. You can definitely hear the guitars. The guitars, I thought, were pretty out front, but they're a nice, clear tone that allow it to not only be that kind of squawking, kind of snarling vibe, but you can hear the riffs. Yeah, and the you leads can, cut through, too. Yep, and the leads, the leads are beautiful. I yeah. actually like the lead tone. Good, very old-school thrashy. Like, I mean, not quite as, like, melodic and tuneful as, say, a testament lead, 
but, but it definitely has all that thrash energy, more like a Gary Holt lead. Now, while I like the production too, one of my main gripes, and it's it's not so much like a huge right. gripe, but it is kind of one, is I do think the vocals are too forward in the mix. Like generally when it comes down to anything blackened, I kind of like the vocals sitting back in the mix just a little mm -hmm. bit. These are right out in front, plus the amount of reverb on them is pretty insane. Like granted, it adds a lot to the atmosphere. It makes it sound more spooky and fucking yep. evil, yep. but it is a bit much to the point where sometimes it drowns out some aspects of this. The culmination of the reverb drenched guitars with the reverb drenched vocals, I thought drowned out the drums a couple times, at least in the beginning. Yeah. Um, you, you know, as you get more used to that overall sound that the album has, you start to hear everything again, but like right in the beginning, it's such a fucking assault that it kind of buries things a little bit. And, well, I'm, of course, going to bitch about the long intro because it is kind of a long intro. Granted, it's good for what it is. Ah, uh, whatever. But one of my issues kind of uh, going through this is, again, that sort of spiked energy and how it stays there. It takes a while for like dynamics to really settle in mm -hmm. on this album. Like honestly, it was Passion on the Hammer that really started to open up a bit, and then you get loose in the Tongue of the Dead, where, wow, we got like melody, we have more distinct yep. parts in here. Because those first two tracks, while gloriously fucking intense as hell, man, it's just a riff a minute, and it's kind of hard to keep up with. And a lot of the songs kind of lead in very explosively too. So a lot of the songs kind of start the same and kind of have that same peaked energy. So you do get some stuff that blends together. But honestly, once you get to Passion Under the Hammer, it really starts to like kind of unveil itself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But I mean, overall, I really dug this. Like this was kind of a like, eh, let's see what this band's all about. Because I never heard him. I had never heard of him outside of a couple of singles. I was kind of curious about this one. And uh, lo and behold, I found another band I liked. So overall, I'm gonna give this three and a half stars. This is a solid album. It's fiercely riffy. It has all the fucking evil atmosphere you would ever want from fucking black metal. Of course, all the riffs you would want from thrash metal. <laughs> it's intense. Like, I cannot uh, pretty much stress that enough. Once it gets going, it does not fucking stop. There really aren't any lulls in the energy at all. And it kind of hurts it a little bit just in terms of like, you know, breaking up songs, but at a certain point, it does settle in, and when you get like fucking used to it, it's fucking awesome. Like there are so many goddamn good riffs on here, and mm -hmm. again, that thrashy energy, that sort of pissed off nature that comes with thrash is all over here, but of course you get all the cool spooky stuff. So best of both worlds there. If you've never heard of this band, much like we hadn't, uh, definitely check this one out. It's <laughs> streaming on YouTube, and uh, go get a fucking physical copy, because I'm probably gonna do that not too long after this is over. Yeah, it's a good solid three and a half for me too, maybe a four, somewhere in between. If we had three quarter stars, then it would be that. I'm not making this. Uh, once again, I had a really good time jamming an album from a band I'd never heard of. You, you're always kind of skeptical when you walk in and go, I've never heard of these guys at all. Have you? No, you haven't either? Great, here we go. Yeah, it is all the things you love about thrash metal. Riffy, a mile a minute, everything's high paced and moving. And I, too, much like Nick, wish that they might just separate that up just a little bit. But that's not to say there's not hooks in every song. There are melodic hooks definitely in every song. There's something in every song that makes it discernible from the one before it and the one after it. And that's a good thing. I hate to say, like, too much reverb drenched dissonance because I'm a dissonance slut. <laughs> but if the vocals hadn't been as overpowering as they were and had sat back a little bit more, I, I probably would have... I probably would have given it that extra bump up to the four. But the fact that they are kind of overpowering over everything and it helps keep things lost, which is not necessarily what you want either. And it's not a bad thing. I'm not really griping in this case, but like the perfectionist in me or the guy that reviews albums nonstop just would tweak things just a little bit. Just and then the reverb and 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 and. Definitely heavy, definitely riffy, definitely a high-paced uh, moving album. Um, your head's probably not going to stop banging. Really, go out and check this out for yourself. We've never heard of it. I mean, maybe you have. Maybe you haven't. But you should now. Yeah. Definitely give it a listen. Yeah. Go, uh, go buy a CD or maybe it's on tape. Who knows? I don't know what bands do anymore. But go buy some form of media and put it in your music player and listen to it at a high volume. In a residential neighborhood at 2 a.m. Everybody will thank you. Just like you should thank him for reaching out and metaphorically twisting your nipples. 
So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to Thralls of Metal.com. We also have shirts there. We also have an audio version of our episodes, or at least some of them, so you don't have to look at us, which is very Fair. beneficial for, I would say, 100% of you're our welcome. fan base. And, of course, as always, just want to thank you all for liking, subscribing, following, all that stuff. This has, again, been amazing. The thank you part of the video, I have to do it because I feel the need to every time because it's crazy that yep. uh, this took off the way it did. You know, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, this YouTube channel is small, but I mean, it feels uh, pretty damn fucking at, awesome. At the same time, we're almost at 13,000 subscribers. I can't believe that 13,000 of you have no taste and we love it. Said yes. Yes, these guys are what I want to bring into my household and... If nothing else, you're learning new dick and fart jokes, right? Bare minimum. Right? But, uh, no, much like Nick, thank you. Thank you so much for continuing to show us support and, uh, you know, become a part of this community. Thank you for that. And thank you, and most definitely, thank you. So one more time, thank you all so much, and we will catch you later.